Before today's episode of Same Business, Different Day, I want to invite you to listen to Velocity, the Vista Chamber podcast, where we interview the movers, shakers, and changemakers of Vista, California. Watch Velocity on YouTube or tune in on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. Velocity, moving Vista forward. When I got deeper into it, into the meaning of what I'm doing, a big part of it, I realized, takes a lot of curiosity, which I I think is lacking nowadays in this world. Um, I feel like being teased when I was younger, it was because it was a lack of curiosity of getting to know someone that's different from you. Mm -hmm. Um, For someone saying like, ew, what is that food? It's a lack of curiosity of like, let's try this something new. Like, let me have an open mind of maybe I might actually like this, or maybe I won't, but at least let me have an open mind and try it out. The curiosity of um, connecting with someone who's different, like let's even take Black Lives Movement last year. And that resonated for me a little bit too because I was teased and I was bullied. And a lot of that is missing connection because there's it lacks curiosity of wanting to connect. That's right. So when you get deeper and get curious about a person, a thing, an event, activity, you realize it's actually not as scary as you think. Think, think, think. Same business, different day. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Same Business, Different Day podcast. I'm your host, Zeke Corley, coming to you as usual from the glorious film hub here in Vista, California. And yes, Meraki season continues. This season extends directly from one of the most productive networking experiences that I've ever had. For those of you that are business owners or aspiring to be, I encourage you to take notes. This isn't just my knowledge that I'm spreading. I'm bringing in so many fabulous guests to share with you as well. And today is no different. Fans of the same business, different day podcast. I'm thrilled today to introduce you to the inspired and inspiring Charmaine Maxipo. Well, thank you, Zeke. That was an amazing, <laughs> fabulous uh, introduction. I've never had one before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're here. You have never been on a podcast before? Oh, well, okay. I take that back. I have, but okay. just not that kind of introduction. Okay. Well, okay. Cool. I'm glad you're here, really. And um, we want to get to know a, a little bit more about you, right? Um, well, we want to know everything about you. And we're going to start early, and then we're going to move our way forward. So please share with us, uh, because everybody's interested in this journey. <laughs> Okay. okay, and the journey is vast, so I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, so uh, can you start like from the beginning? Where did it all start? Like, where was I born? Yeah. All right. So mm-hmm. I'm actually from Philippines. I okay. Was born in Philippines mm-hmm. and immigrated to the United States when I was six. Okay. Moved to Jersey, so I have a little bit of a Jersey girl in my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then moved to Hawaii after high school. After high school, mm-hmm. so you spent. All of that time from six to high school Mm -hmm. in Jersey Mm -hmm. with your parents. Yes. Okay. Now, what were you doing from six to high school? Were you, uh, you know, how how were you raised? How what what was life like in Jersey? Man, living in New Jersey as an immigrant is hard. I was teased for being different. I had this accent that I think I probably got rid of. By maybe ninth or tenth grade. Really? Yeah. Filipino, right? Filipino accent. No, not a lot of uh, Filipinos in Jersey. No. So when I lived in Jersey, I lived in Newark first. And I don't know if you've been to Newark before, but Newark's pretty ghetto. Yeah. Um, They even used to have shows where cops would be chasing just, you know, (laughs) bad people. Yeah. Um, We would hear gunshots outside of our window Mm -hmm. and... um, Kids are mean. I actually have a scar on my chin because a kid pushed me down mm. metal stairs just because mm. I was different. I had kids come up to our um, front door of our house 
or just like the front and screaming Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, jeez. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I never realized like how mean people were until I moved to the States. Yeah. And, and I mean, being different, I guess, is a, a big piece of that, right? Because um, like I was raised in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And so it's really culturally diverse out there. And so a lot of Asian folks and mm-hmm. definitely no difference between Chinese, Japanese and Filipino. Well, it seemed like everyone knew what Chinese were, but not Filipino. Yeah, yeah. At least in in Jersey. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of um, Hispanics and Blacks and Italians. Um, There were definitely a lot of Filipinos, too, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, Is that what made your parents land there? I mean, did they know somebody in Jersey? My grandparents. Um, My grandfather was part of the Philippine War and helped with the uh, U.S. Army, I guess. And Mm -hmm. so he was able to get citizenship here and then petitioned for his family, our whole family and my dad's side to come to the States. Oh, really? So that's how we got to the United States. Okay. Mm -hmm. So immigration was fairly, like, he made it happen. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like you were sneaking in. No. It wasn't anything. That would be an amazing story. Difficult. (laughs) Right, right. It made it a lot easier, though. I mean, that's important because, and and actually, you talk about, like, Italian culture and, and various cultures that are in Jersey or in a lot mm-hmm. of the East Coast, they didn't have it as easy, Mm-mm. you know, to get there, but yet still yeah. in fl- still expressing power over you because you were different. Mm-hmm. But yet you were a legal immigrant. Well, I think mm-hmm. I was also like fresh off the boat, so to speak, okay. with the accent. Language and, and everything. Yeah, and sure. then um, I remember I didn't really have like the latest clothing, so I had... Girls who I thought were my friends would make fun of me behind my back. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, what is she wearing? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Kids. Kids are mean. Kids are mean. <laughs> kids are mean. <laughs> Parents, make sure you uh, expose your kids. Raise better kids, <laughs> yes. period. Yes. Or stop acting like a child so your kids won't act like you. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> That's really a good lesson. Oh, right? yes. That's exactly. That's important. Um, okay, so now, did you get to know your grandparents, though, yeah, while you were there? Yeah, um, a little bit. My grandfather had, um, what is it called? I'm having a brain fart. Um, where you can't remember. Alzheimer's or dementia? Alzheimer's. Okay. Yeah, or maybe dementia, I don't remember. Uh-huh. I was so young. Mm-hmm. But he was way gone, and he, he probably had PTSD from the war as well, too. Sure. So he wasn't he wasn't all there. Mm-hmm. But I knew my grandmother. Okay. So, but I mean, he was obviously, I mean, he served, he was yep. hardworking, mm-hmm. you know, he, he cared about family. He yeah. reached out to you guys to help you guys get there and everything. Yeah. That's awesome. And then they, they had 11 kids, my dad's side. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now, where were they? They all, of all your aunts and uncles. they actually got all petitioned to come to the United States. Okay. So were, were they in Jersey though? Yep. Most of them were in Jersey except for one. Um, one was in Canada, okay. Toronto. So you had a little bit of a community mm-hmm. of, of at least family members. Yeah. Very cool. Very there was cool. a lot of, there's 30 cousins, 30 mm-hmm. plus cousins. I lost count. Yeah. So it was fun growing up when we would have family reunions because we had all like our peers from like a few years older to a few years younger. Yeah. Now, um, obviously older folks or, and even your parents, uh, being around, uh, were influences over you i mean did mm-hmm. were there any folks that um were had any entrepreneurial spirit or, or spirit mm-hmm. or were uh, influences over you in that way i or at least good advice would say no okay <laughs> all, definitely all not uh-huh. um i'm actually a nurse mm-hmm. so we come from a family of either nurses or engineers mm-hmm. or if you don't have some kind of professional job like that's just what you do Mm-hmm. I did not want to be a nurse, actually, because I didn't want to be stereotyped that if, oh, you're Filipino, you must be a nurse. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Um, my dad did try to do a business when we were younger, um, but that didn't go well. It was like okay. a computer chip business. But he tried. But he tried. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the influences that you got were basically like, just do what I do. Like, let's just, we're all going down this same yeah. path. Yeah. It was expected of you to be either a nurse or an engineer. Of you. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. At least that's my experience. Because mm-hmm. I remember I wanted to be 
uh, computer science. I want to do graphic design or okay. web design. Yeah. My dad's like, oh, there's no money in that. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> fine. Now, I'm not sure what year this was, but uh, there's always been money in web design. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, now there is. Yeah. Um, it was when mm. computers first came out. Mm. And then um, I wanted to do architecture because I still wanted to rebel against being a nurse. Mm -hmm. So I did architecture for a little bit. Okay. I was actually a semester away from graduating with my associate's degree, and I dropped out. <laughs> mm, because? I like the creativity. I like the design, but I didn't have any in human interaction. I was on my drafting table for hours at end, mm -hmm. and the only time I got to have any in human interaction was during presentations. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, is this how real life's going to be? It's like, mm, kind of. You only talk to your clients when you, you know yeah how you present your design or whatever it is th your client needs I'm like no i don't like this <laughs> so you made it you just made a pivot um oh gosh i jumped around so much i went from like uh i thought about maybe computer science again I'm like no i'm still gonna be on a computer at the whole time mm -hmm. i thought about interior design um like no my parents were just still like, no, that's, there's no money in that. Like, what so you your do? parents is your parents were definitely super influential. Yes, over yes. You and, and what you decide and what? No, how, did you have a bunch of siblings? I have yes, I have an older brother. Then there's me, my younger brother, younger sister, mm -hmm. and I also have my parents divorced later on, mm -hmm. and then my dad remarried, and I now have a half brother, mm -hmm. a younger half brother. Okay, now. So you're not the oldest. You're like third oldest, is it? Second oldest. Second oldest. Even though sometimes I feel like I am the oldest. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it would make sense as as we continue through this this episode, we're gonna figure out that it makes sense that you you you're a little bit the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Man, do I give off that energy? <laughs> <laughs> Your resume does. <laughs> so, um, but now at the same time, though, let's say if we're talking about because we broke the reveal early. Now you've already explained that you're a nurse, but you're more than that. So it's OK. Yeah. But you there was some times in there that you were clearly dreaming big mm -hmm. right early on. Mm -hmm. uh, it had to be right. Um, and I wonder when that breakthrough came for you when when you started dreaming so big, because as we get to talking later about what it is else that you do with your yeah. life, um, I want to hear about, you know, the genesis of that. That's actually a very good question. Um, I think my biggest dream when I was living in Jersey was I definitely knew I wanted to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know who that reminds me of the most. Uh, and as we uh, we're like bringing it back again to Meraki season, right? Um, <laughs> Natasha Mills, uh, who is also a leg of that Meraki, uh, you know, that whole group, mm -hmm. is uh, she wanted to get out of Louisiana so bad. And her story about that, you got to go back and check that out in okay. one of the episodes. It's hilarious. OK, so you wanted to get out of Jersey. Um, they weren't treating you right anyway. But yeah. you did have family there. Yes. OK. But our family dynamics, to be honest, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, there was... A bit like tumultuous um, relationship with, between my mom and my dad. So, mm -hmm. and I was always the kind of like the mediator between them. Mm -hmm. So I acted like the older child, kind of sure. shielding my younger brother, younger sister from I get it. from that. I get it. So I think that's why sometimes I feel like I'm the older. I get it. <laughs> I respect that. Older sibling. I respect that. Yeah. You just had like you just felt it in your heart to like, hey, we gotta, yeah, you know, tone this down or get it out of here because we gotta raise these kids yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Since you guys don't want to raise them right, <laughs> yeah. and I think it's also because I'm the oldest female. Mm -hmm. So a lot of in the Filipino culture, the oldest female, a lot of the things um, fall on the oldest female to take care of certain things in the house. That's in a lot of cultures, for sure. True. Yeah, uh, you just had the maternal instinct. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I like that a lot. And, you know, we don't talk enough on this podcast about how important women are it just in business mm -hmm. and in, in various ways. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in business at home and, and, and so forth. But your friend, Angela, was in here, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about... Um, uh, being a badass woman, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's just clearly what you were. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so then you just wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. Where were you going? What was the dream? 
The dream was always Hawaii. Really? Yeah. Always Hawaii. It was always Hawaii. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. For as long as I can remember, I don't know how or where it even came from. Did you know anybody there? No. You watch Hawaii Five-0 on TV? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's all of my guesses. I actually <laughs> also knew I wanted to go to college in Hawaii as well. Mm -hmm. um, but in the beginning, my parents were like, be practical. We don't have money for that. <laughs> I hated that. I hated that. It's like, no, you're like squishing me from like achieving my dreams. You're limiting me from mm -hmm. what I could possibly do. Okay. I hated that. Yeah. The, the term be practical. I hate that phrase. Be practical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like play small. Like, no, I refuse right. to play small. Right. I, so I, I want to dream big. I want to do bigger things. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. I can make that. I can make Hawaii practical. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And had they ever been to Hawaii? Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe you got some experience. Did they take you with <laughs> with them when they went to Hawaii? No. You hadn't been to Hawaii. No. At all. No. But you wanted to go. Yes. And they had been. No. Oh, they actually hadn't. no, they haven't. Oh, okay. Sorry, they no, they been. haven't. Okay. Okay. So maybe that's why they just didn't have the vision. Then. No. Okay. So then. Ignoring squeals and warning lights on your car is not a good way to lower the cost of owning it. And going without essential business insurance is not a good way to save money in your business. What we know for sure is doing either will cost you more than you will save in the short and the long run. With YourInsurancePlace.com, you can trust the specialists to help maintain your cars and avoid major expenses. Business owners should look to business insurance specialists when it comes to finding competitively priced quality insurance coverage for their businesses. At YourInsurancePlace.com, we specialize in workers' compensation, general and professional liability, employment practices and cyber liability, property owner policies, and bonds for most types of businesses. YourInsurancePlace.com knows that we can help. If you're uncovered, need to lower the cost of your current insurance, or need better coverage, we can help. YourInsurancePlace.com has been helping businesses for close to 40 years. If you need a quote on your insurance, Call us now at 858-569-8100 or find us at yourinsuranceplace.com. We are business insurance specialists ready to help. Saving for your finances can be difficult and scary, but when you have the right people around you, it doesn't have to be. My fiance and I understand it's not just about creating a legacy, but also building and serving one another. And that's what we're here to do. Brett and I bring back the fine in finances. We can do everything from saving for your children's future, also building a legacy for yourself. Our mission is no family left behind, and we truly stand behind our mission. You can reach out to us by either following us on Instagram at PipkinBrett or at The Fierce Female Financier, or you can just simply give us a call, 402-617-0645. Looking forward to serving and helping you. I guess, you know, that's a big stretch for them because, you know, you do hear those stories. Forget the immigrant part. You hear about people from the East Coast and they want to be actors or whatever. And mm -hmm. they say, yeah. you got to move to L.A., you got to move to Hollywood. And it was like, I can't, that, I can't even fathom that. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about moving from the Philippines to the East Coast mm -hmm. and skipping California, going to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a big step. And they probably just couldn't wrap their heads around it, huh? No. But they stopped you. They tried to stop you from wrapping your head around it. Yeah, that's the that's the downside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you still had that dream. Yes. And you went to school in a way. Yes. Yes. I went to Hawaii Pacific University. Uh huh. And graduated there and stayed there and um, ended up starting my nursing career there. Mm. And then left just shy of five years ago to be a travel nurse. And ended up here in California. Wow. Mm -hmm. You did it. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like when you finally got to Hawaii for the first time? Oh, gosh. I remember the first time I was there. It was a bit of a culture shock. Sure. Um, people in the East Coast are a little bit uh, rough around the edges. <laughs> So to speak. I'm California born and raised, so I'm not going <laughs> to sit here and try to laugh at these people. But uh, I've heard. <laughs> Which I, in, in a way I actually appreciate because mm. what you see is what you get. Sure. There's no sugarcoating anything. Mm. There's no trying to guess, okay, does this person 
really mean. Well, like all that weather nice. they deal with. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you so I appreciate the honesty. Yeah. There's, again, what you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes how they say things is not the nicest way sure. of most tactful way of saying things. Mm-hmm. So when I w- moved to Hawaii, people were so nice. It was just a little, again, culture shock. Okay. I remember the first time I was culture shocked was I was in the elevator and someone had gotten out and turned around and said, have a nice day. And I did a look at my left and looked at my right. I go, who are you talking to? Oh, me. He's yeah. like, yeah, you. Have a nice day. I was like, oh, have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that would never happen in Jersey. <laughs> right, right. So did you go anywhere else throughout the U.S. before you would? I mean, yeah. you, you, you did explore did. a little bit and, and you'd been to California. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, did I? No, actually, nope. Mm-mm. Okay. Where else did you go before you went to Hawaii? I mean, my family had uh, trips in Florida because we have family there. Okay. We have family in Tennessee, Canada, uh, Rhode Island. Um, I grew up in the church when I was mm-hmm. growing up, so we did a lot of camping trips mm-hmm. uh, all down the coast of the East Coast. So okay. we went to Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, uh, all the different states in the east coast to yeah, be honest it's a camping trip yeah, but that definitely trips. wasn't during the winter time on the east coast some of them were yeah. actually yeah so uh I'm my chills thinking favorite about i'm california born and raised I oh can't yeah i know i'm so spoiled now <laughs> hawaii spoiled me i'm bad <laughs> but um my favorite actually camping in the east coast was winter camping where uh it was either pennsylvania or upstate new york mm. it was fun yeah Upstate New York is just like kind of really just out there, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's 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 not it's all bustle and bustle. It's yeah, yeah it's it, that's what I heard. Great countryside. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So, what about early job experience? Before we get into, um, did you work at all through college or before college? Yes. So before mm-hmm. I moved out of Jersey, I actually worked in the hospital because my mom said, if you want a good job, work in the hospital, get your foot in the door. So yeah. I worked in the cafeteria. As the first in the tray line, and then I moved into the, the with the dietitians. So I was like the dietitian's right hand man, and would go to each patient's room and tell them, "Okay, this is what the dietitian has prescribed for you as far as your diet. This is mm-hmm. what you're allowed to eat. This is what you're not allowed to eat." And mm-hmm. I got their, I got their diet. Yeah. Um, was any of that your famous chicken adobo? No. <laughs> <laughs> you just told me about it. I'm just throwing that in. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish your story. Um, but yeah, and then when I moved to Hawaii, I worked in a high end gym, I guess you could say. Okay. Yeah, high end gym mm-hmm. um, where like young professionals, actually, no, not even young professionals. It was like the who's who of Hawaii. So. Okay. Because it had a spa and it was not cheap to go to that gym. Mm-hmm. Like rappers, actors would go to that gym because they were they wouldn't be like bothered when they're at that gym. Sure. Um, but that was where also I developed a lot of my appreciation for health and fitness because I was surrounded by so many active people, so many healthy people. Mm-hmm. Like I like this. Right, right. Now, were you a networker at that time? Like, did you go around meeting people? Were you shaking hands and talking to people? Or were you kind of off to yourself? No, I was the front desk. So I was the face of the uh, the gym. So So they had to come talk to you. They had to come to talk to me. And what my position was, I was the opener of the gym. So in the morning, I was acting um, MOD. My manager, manager on duty. Okay. So... Um, yeah, I definitely had to network and get to know all the members. And so you made connections mm-hmm, and, and made you lots got of used connections. To connections. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and most people don't think this is true, but I'm actually an introvert. <laughs> you know, uh, that's, that's interesting that you say that I am as well. And definitely people don't think that's true, <laughs> but, um, it's people who are introverted, tend to be more perceptive. Mm -hmm. So you get to have a better understanding of people. I'm not saying I don't have a psych degree or anything like that. But at the same time, you pay attention to people a little bit more Mm -hmm. and then the care comes out. Mm -hmm. And then the the bond is actually better. So networking lends itself to the introvert, I believe. I agree. But I do, I did minor in psychology as well. Oh, okay. 
because back in high school, I remember I had a psychology teacher that just like opened so many things for me. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. like self actualization. Like, what does that mean? Oh, that's dope. <laughs> that's dope. Well, okay, you're gonna have to run this list now. It sounds like you you had a lot of interest in school. Is that true? What what were your majors, minors? Like, how many did you go through? You said you, you started one and stopped. Oh, and James man. And I don't know. I don't remember. Did you go through a number? More than one? More well, than definitely two? more than one. More, more than, than two. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think a, a big part of it revolved around um, health and fitness and mm-hmm. just the body and then um, the mind as well. Mm-hmm. Um, cause the reason why I got into nursing was because I liked understanding why my body does certain sure. things like and that. knowing what I can do to make it better mm-hmm. as far as healing or what to feed my body. And mm-hmm. then psychology was something that was interesting to me because I like to understand why I am the way I am, because if also, if I understand why the way, why I am the way I am, it also helps me understand why other people are the way they are sure if that makes any sense at all sure and also helps you understand um why people view you the way that they view you Mm. you know what i'm saying because you understand yourself yeah i think it starts there yes me personally i you know it's about yourself and how you feel about yourself how you understand yourself yeah and then you can uh, Okay, we're getting a little too deep. <laughs> so let's. <laughs> I don't mind going deep. <laughs> I've been told I like to go deep. So That's I'm great. Like, oh, well, I can't okay. help it. <laughs> we're going to get into that too. We're going to get into that too. Deep swimming and diving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, let's let's do it. I think we, I think it's time. Um, and we'll get back in, and continue our conversation a little bit more. So let's talk a little bit more about Charmaine. Never scared of the weird scary or unfamiliar charmaine lives her life not just like a business owner but as a boss charmaine is an rn specifically a labor and delivery nurse at ucsd and scripts and if that isn't adventurous enough for you wait until we learn even more about her she is the creator and host of the podcast curiosity over fear Our show speaks so much about the journeys of our guests, but it seems Charmaine is on a never ending journey. So before she gets her travel channel show, we get to speak to her before she's too big for us. (laughs) So Charmaine, welcome again to the show. Thank you so much. Wow, that was even better introduction than the first one. Whoa. Okay, Okay. I love it. it. I'm glad you like it. So uh, the dreamer, the visionary, you started exploring a little bit. You got into traveling more. And um, and I, I want to hear more about, again, you know, that first experience in Hawaii, but also the other experiences that came after that, because you didn't stop there, Mm-mm. even though that, you know, it sounds like that's at least your second home, maybe your first home. I would say it's my first home now. Wow. It will always be my first home. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad I caught you in San Diego. (laughs) Thank you for being here. Of course. Um, Even though, you know, if you invited me to Hawaii, maybe we could have done a show out there. Oh, yes, yes. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I'm really interested in, you know, the various journeys that you've been on and, and the leaps that you've been taking. Where do I even start? Start with curiosity over fear. Let's 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 go there, right? Okay, I, I'm interested in finding out about um, what that term means to you, the curiosity and the courage that that you have uh, that starts all of this, and then I think that that will fall into where you've been since. Okay, well, I've always been interested in traveling. I actually used to have a blog that I would just blog my travels Mm -hmm. this was before social media so i had a website i think i don't know if you guys even remember zanga um Mm -hmm. i would write there and then at one point i my boyfriend at that time we traveled all over asia and Mm -hmm. then we went to vietnam cambodia um thailand and i would just blog everything so mm-hmm. my blog at that point was called, I think, Fearless Leap. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't Ooh, even. I think it, I no. The word leap. Actually, first it was called My Travels. My is also my nickname. 
Okay. So, and then eventually it evolved to Fearless Sleep mm -hmm. because when I was traveling, I was doing kind of, I guess, weird stuff, like eating weird food. Oh, oh, I <laughs> forgot about this. So I'm talking about the travels, but there's so much more to you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're into conquering it all. Okay. I mean, I, any, do I want to know about the weird food? Well, like frogs and um, slugs and, mm. um, oh man, I don't remember now. Those Just are pretty so common nowadays. Yeah, no. Uh, cockroach, oh, uh, oh, cricket. Okay, now, okay. okay. <laughs> um, in Philippines, it's a it's called tamilok, which is a woodworm. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay, more fear factor kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but For me, it is. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, but the regular person wouldn't sure. eat it. So mm -hmm. I don't think people would eat like frogs nowadays. Now you were just doing this because you're curious. You're doing this because you're just like I don't say no to anything. Or what? What was the story? Here? Actually, for that, mm -hmm. the reason is because when I was in school, in like elementary school, co uh, not college, but high school, my mom for my 16th birthday party, my mom made Filipino food. That's just how us Filipinos do. When we have parties, we make everything from scratch. Uh -huh. We don't buy pizza and like cater from sure. like outside. And we had invited, actually I had invited all like my high school friends and I remember them coming to my party and looking at the food and like, ew, what is that? Okay. And so that always like really upset me. Okay. Because then my mom ordered pizza. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm starving. I'm like, wait, I thought you just said that you were not hungry. Now that pizza's here, you're mm -hmm. starving. Mm -hmm. So to me, at least try it once and it's confirmed that you really don't like it. Okay. That's fine. I respect that you at least tried it once okay. and confirm that you don't like it. Okay. But if you just look at it and you you just judge it automatically without mm -hmm. even trying it, yes. then it's like you have no like credibility no, no, no. Right. of of actually really liking you never tried it so how do you know if you if you actually liked it mm -hmm. so i try to keep that with me too keep that integrity of if i'm going to tell you you tried this mm -hmm. at least once i'm going to try anything at least once too you try anything at least once at least once wow yes okay okay yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay, so that's the food part of things, and that's traveling through Asia. Now, tell me about the other places that you've gone and the adventures oh, God. Uh, that come with it. Um, I was stuck in Iceland for a day because mm -hmm. our plane broke down. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Actually, I feel like I manifested that. Because oh, I you was, wanted it to happen? Yes, I did. Uh -uh. Uh, I was on my way to Ireland. I was going to do this whole Europe trip. By myself and i remember i had a layover in iceland and i've, I've always wanted to go to iceland mm -hmm. and i remember texting my sister that day and i was like all right i'm in my layover I'm like you know it'd be really cool if my uh flight got delayed just for a few hours uh -huh. just so i could like just leave the airport just for a few hours check out the area and then come back yeah and then next thing you know it <laughs> It was delayed yeah. and it kept getting delayed and more delayed and more yeah. delayed. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yes. Yeah. That's so, better delayed than the alive situation. At least it didn't crash and you had to no. each other. Yeah, they try everything once. <laughs> 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 um, so, um, but now the curiosity though, like the curiosity over fear. I mean, there, there's a like a, a real theme behind this though. I mean, it. where does it... I understand what you're saying, it, it, where it came from, but I mean, it's it's got to be even deeper than that. Um, I don't know. I feel like that's always been something that's. I mean, because you couldn't just tell everybody that you couldn't walk up to anybody and just be like, you know, don't be scared. Just be curious. Just do it. And and so, how did you translate that to others? Um, you know, especially like even on your podcast, or how do people? Translated to you in their words, how in their experiences when you interview them mm -hmm. on your show? I think so. When I had fearless sleep, the reason why I had fearless sleep was when I was kind of brainstorming with my sister about um, branding and names for my blog. And she said, It sounds like what you're doing is all the things that you do, you're just fearlessly leaping into mm. whatever new activity or n new thing that you're trying to do i'm mm -hmm. like yeah actually yeah you're right i am kind of fearlessly leaping mm -hmm. um but i remember thinking like nah i don't like that name and also when i looked it up it was pretty common and then so but 
when I got deeper into it, into the meaning of what I'm doing, a big part of it, I realized, takes a lot of curiosity, which I, I think is lacking nowadays in this world. Um, I feel like being teased when I was younger, it was because it was a lack of curiosity of getting to know someone that's different from you. Mm-hmm. Um, for someone saying like, ew, what is that food? It's a lack of curiosity of like, let's try this something new. Like, let me have an open mind of maybe I might actually like this, or maybe I won't, but at least let me have an open mind and try it out. Mm-hmm. The curiosity of um, connecting with someone who's different, like let's even take Black Lives Movement last year. Mm-hmm. And that resonated for me a little bit too because I was teased and I was bullied and... A lot of that is missing connection because there's it lacks curiosity of wanting to connect. That's right. So when you get deeper and get curious about a person, a thing, an event, activity, you realize it's actually not as scary as you think. I told you we get deep. I told you we finally get deep. I'm glad that I'm glad you said that. All of that was amazing. So now, okay. Um, Travel wise, mm-hmm. right now you're talking about going places, well, and being stuck places that a lot of people may not want to go to, mm-hmm. right? And we can talk. Um, we're not talking political or anything, but there was a lot uh, to be said about what people would call flyover states in the United States, mm-hmm. right? The Midwest and so forth, where I understand that this beautiful countryside, some mm-hmm. of the places I've been, some many that I haven't, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that they're living great lives. They There still may be some ignorance in some places, yes. right? Because they're not used to the diversity or they haven't yes. seen it. But that's just ignorance. And if they have enough curiosity, then yes. we can all figure it out together. Exactly. Am I, I'm getting on the same page. Yes, Look at this. exactly. So now... Tell us about uh, more places now. I mean, because not just not just the places now. Let's get a little bit uh, further into this. Thank you for tuning in to the Same Business Different Day podcast. If you like the way that our show sounds and looks and are interested in doing a podcast of your own, send us an email. Yes, we've gotten into the podcast game, producing podcasts for individuals and businesses just like you. Contact us at a different day radio at gmail.com or on IG at a different day radio. When it comes to your wedding, you want to look and feel your best. You don't need to settle for anything less than perfection on the most important day of your life. With Meraki Allure, you can have a custom designed and measured wedding dress that is exactly what you imagine. They will work with you to choose the perfect style and materials so you can enjoy your dream wedding day knowing that you look stunning. Let Meraki Allure help make your special day unforgettable. Book your consultation today at MerakiAllure.com. That's M-E-R-A-K-I-A-L-L-U-R-E.com. The Film Hub is the future of co-working in downtown Vista. Get energized in an inspiring work environment that is built for your success. With multiple membership options for workspace and private offices, you can become a part of our co-working community. The Film Hub makes it easier to produce the professional content your business needs. From video production, live streams, photo shoots, or in-person events, you can create all this and more in our audio and video facilities. Love your work and where you accomplish it. The Film Hub. I will tell everybody listening that whenever I have spoken to anyone about Charmaine, the first thing they say is, oh, you know she swam with sharks, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> the first thing they all say. You're out there swimming with sharks and stuff. I mean, you really, you know, going adventurous i want to get into the bodybuilding i want to get into like you know you've really (laughs) taken some leaps we're talking about leaps and that's what we talk about on this show a lot right because there are a lot of people who want to go into business that it won't take that extra step Mm -hmm. you know and you are like i said inspired and inspiring uh 
and you can be for others, male or female, but especially females, um, especially immigrants, especially people your height, especially, you know, whatever <laughs> we could we would say, yeah. but people um, can learn from you and uh, can channel their fear and, and work it into being curious and actually trying something mm -hmm. new, right? Correct. So um, tell us, tell us a little bit more about some of the, what, what, what's the swimming with sharks things first? Oh, well, that one, I just heard in Hawaii that there was some girl named Ocean mm -hmm. who was taking a group of people that were willing mm -hmm. and curious to go swimming with the sharks, mm -hmm. not with a cage, but open water. Mm -hmm. So right. I was like, hell yeah. I want to try that. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> how how long did you think about it? I don't think I thought about it oh, that long. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to go my, by myself. So I tried to find people to come with me, and no one wanted to come with me. In Whoa. fact, I asked them, like, even my coworkers. And I remember one coworker, she gave me a hug. And I was like, what's oh, that no. hug for? She goes, because it was nice Last knowing you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? Wow. She's like, Pats me in the shoulder. All right. It was nice knowing you. Wow. I finally <laughs> found someone to, to go with me. Uh -huh. And it was amazing. The I first know. time I went, there was 30 plus sharks mm. in the water. Mm. It was, we even saw a tiger shark mm -hmm. on my first time. Mm -hmm. And what made it even better was mm. that there were humpback whales. And I actually said this in my launch party. Uh, I, I did it more dramatic, of course. Mm -hmm where basically we were in the water and all of a sudden the person that was in the boat, like kind of a lookout and keeping track of the boat goes, drop everything you're doing and swim that way. And I had no idea what was going on. We was just following ocean. And I'm like, why are we swimming away from the boat? What's going on? Like, oh my gosh, is there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the whole entire time I thought we were swimming away from something like some danger. Mm -hmm. But then I slowly realized that we were actually swimming somewhere towards something beautiful, which was the humpback whales. There was three mm. of them. Like mm. they were so close. There was two adult humpback whales and one baby um, humpback whale. And you could hear them underwater mm. and you just, you see them. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like how often does this happen to wow. anyone? Yeah. And no. just randomly. Never happened to Ex me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So my point for that um, story is that sometimes when you real when you think that you're running away from fear, when you actually embrace it, you could actually move towards something that is beautiful and something just magical that you never thought you could ever experience. I love it. That's the one right there. You see me typing. That's the business lesson. Okay, bodybuilding. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the bodybuilding, actually, I think I did out of naivete. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I had gone on a cruise for my friend's wedding. And all I did at that time was, it was open bar. <laughs> okay. So me and my boyfriend at that time, all we did was eat, sleep, drink, repeat. And we told ourselves we're going to go work out, but we did not. Uh -huh. I gained a good amount of weight okay. during that cruise because I remember coming in and having this dress that was nicely fitted but not super tight at mm -hmm. the end or like midway I'm like I oh, can't put this on anymore wow. <laughs> yeah uh. and so when I got back home I told one of my person personal trainer friends like hey Troy I need to do something about this I need your help and to keep myself accountable I'm going to sign up for a fitness competition that is coming up in like less than three months. So I had less than three months to prepare. And me not knowing it was a national fitness competition, mm -hmm. I was just doing it just to reach my goal of like losing the weight, getting fit and all that stuff. Yeah. And I remember I got linked up with one of the girls who are, who's my friend now, who has done a competition before. And she goes, man, you really, when you do something, you go all the way. I go, what do you mean? It's like, you went for like the national competition. You know, mm. people fly in from all over the United States to do this competition. I'm like, <gasps> really? Mm. Okay. 
okay like i wasn't even thinking about that yeah. but it, it was more of just making sure like i was accountable for myself and i wasn't there to try to win first place or second place or just even third place or just first whatever right. i was there to i was there for a personal goal in which i met yeah i went from 26 percent body fat to 16 percent body fat mm. and um which i didn't think i could ever do <laughs> but you were willing to go for it yes yeah a lot of hard work and dedication and you weren't going to stop till you got i mean what if you got to like 18 percent? like you weren't going to just stop there no. yeah that was your goal and you and so you set goals and you go for it mm -hmm. bottom line yeah i actually we didn't have a goal of 16 percent. we just like work hard just, just get to this competition yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that was it and did you feel good in the competition yeah i did and okay. it, in retrospect, too, I was thinking, I remember that day, there was another girl that I was prepping with, and she was very insecure about her body because she was comparing herself from how the other girls looked. I knew I was not going to look anywhere near like the other girls because a lot of them have been preparing for a year or like even years. They do this on a regular. Mm -hmm. They had six packs and I had none. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I had flat uh, like stomach, but I was happy where I was. Sure. And that was the point. Yeah. So, and I felt bad for her. I'm like, you know, this, you know, you, what matters is that you showed up and you did the work. And that's all, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That's right. That's so, right. Yeah. You keep showing up. Yeah, exactly. You showed up for body painting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you knew about that, too. Yeah. That one, I have a friend who's an artist mm -hmm. and I uh, was at the gym and he actually asked one of my other friends if she wants to do it. And she, he asked me, but I was going back to New Jersey for Christmas to visit family. And I was like, when I get back, though, I'll do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then um, ever since then, it was every month, first Fridays, we would do body painting because he was trying to get his portfolio down and his body, uh, his uh, body paint skills like better. Mm -hmm. Because um, he wanted to eventually create a table, um, table book table, or what is it called? Table art or table photo book. Table. Oh, like a, oh, okay. Like a coffee table book or yes. something like that. Okay. I'm like, I, I'm losing that's lots right. of words. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, that's, and he got really, really good. And I do have some prints out there <laughs> of great. me. Yeah. That's great. I mean, you're really conquering things. I like it. So now, how do you do all of these types of things? Oh, I like the deep diving one in Mexico, too. That one was oh. awesome. Oh, that was so beautiful. Um, that one was scary. Was it? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Because you're going 66 feet deep. 66 feet? Yes. Ugh. On one breath. One breath. That one was breath. the thing that was amazing to me. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well. And the whole entire time you're thinking... What if I, I lose my breath when I'm down there? What do I do? What if I faint? Yeah. But, you know, you have your, your safeties. And um, my static breath hold was three minutes. So a big part of it, to be honest, is mental. Of course. It's the mental talk that you say to yourself. Because I've already demonstrated that I could do all these things. It was a matter of actually doing them. Because I didn't pass the first time. Mm. Because I got in my head. And um, I did the test here in San Diego, and you couldn't see 10 feet in front of you. So I got scared. Mm -hmm. I let my fear overtake, and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. And that's got to happen sometimes to you, too, right? Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. All okay. the time. You're not always just I am not. Mm -mm, everything. No. Okay. It takes me two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20. But you keep trying. Yes. I like it. Okay. So now, as we start to wind down, um, I want to get an idea about how you're able to pull all of this off. How, how, what's the work life balance for you? And how is this such, you know, so prevalent? Um, because it's clearly important. It's so great for your mental health to be able to just free yourself, take off to Hawaii, go, you know, come back to work, you know. And of course, you had you talked about it earlier, like 60 hour work week. You know what I'm saying? Five days in a row, 12 hours a mm -hmm. day. And you were supposed to work today. So thank you for taking the day <laughs> off because you were supposed to work another 12 hours. Yeah. Right. So to be able to 
take a good break that is meaningful enough mm-hmm. to help you with your mental space and to yeah. give you some comfort and relaxation to go off and do conquer more fears. Uh, tell, tell me how you do it. Tell us all how you do it. You know how they, the saying goes, work hard, play hard? Sure. I make sure I ha- set time so I can play hard. Mm-hmm. So if I set a lot of time where I'm working, I make sure that I also set time so that I am just taking care of me. Is it a scheduling thing you're saying? It's a scheduling thing, yes. Okay. Um, and then at the beginning of this year, I worked a ton. Okay. Where I basically didn't really have a lot of time for myself. So I told myself at the end of this year, well, at least the last three months from, well, actually maybe from just October on, I'm going to decrease my, my work hours mm-hmm. and just travel and enjoy myself for... And pretty much enjoy the fruits of my labor from the beginning of the year. That's right. And enjoy the holidays. Yeah. Congratulations on figuring that out because it's so important. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's also one of the lessons that we teach. We don't, we're not just talking entrepreneurship on the show, but we actually also speak about um, how people can find balance, right? Because you need it. Yeah. The mental health is so important in in everything you do we want you to succeed in business so you're going to have to put in the energy for that but if you can't figure out how to balance it then you're just going to crack up and fail yeah i also realized that when my self-care is down when i don't have the best mental capacity to do anything it suffers in my work and how how i take care of my patients it suffers in my creativity Mm -hmm. it suffers in my health Mm -hmm. um it's just it it bleeds into everything so I try to make sure that I take care of me first because if I can't take care of me first, I can't do anything else. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, it's, it's a practice. I'm not perfect at it, but it's, it's a practice every day that a choice I have to make. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And you're, and you're good at it. I mean, actually you're, you're picking the right (laughs) ventures, you know, but you're also like taking it to another level, which is even so much more important. So when are we going to start the travel channel show? Oh man, you're not the first person that said that. I'm like, oof. I um, think it's gotta happen. I don't know if I. That was never really the goal. I actually had one person that I met through uh, Meraki. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I can see you actually having a Netflix show. I'm like, mm-hmm. I never envisioned that, but if that happens, cool. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I can see it. We'll see. I can see it. Speaking of Meraki. Um, we all we all understand uh, based on previous episode that Meraki means to do something with love or mm-hmm. passion or whatever. So uh, I've got to ask you uh, what your Meraki is. Well, I think my Meraki is my curiosity. It, it's something that just comes natural to me that I don't even realize that I'm just I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So my passion is curiosity to explore the things that i don't know that's right i love it i love it i wish i had it but i love you it. you do have it you just <laughs> need to practice it <laughs> maybe i need to practice it more maybe i need to figure out how to hold my breath for three minutes <laughs> <laughs> just ask yourself what if i can do this or what if i do this is that how we do it yeah that's all we got to do that's all you have to do what if i can do this it's like what mm. if i do this mm-hmm. what would happen yeah what if i took a Free diving course, what would happen? Yeah. What if I swam with sharks? What would happen? What if I show up to this podcast? What would happen? Yeah. What if I started a podcast? What would happen? Right. right. But nobody patted you on the shoulder before you came to the podcast and said, No. You have to do that for yourself. See you again. Oh. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) It's a little different than swimming with sharks. (laughs) No, 100%. I really appreciate you being here. The business lesson of the day came real clear sometimes when you're running from fear you may actually be running to something magical Mm -hmm. okay so we've got that in the books and we really appreciate you um before the travel channel catches catches up with you and snatches you up uh we want to let everybody know that you can find curiosity over fear podcast everywhere you get your podcast and also uh, find Charmaine on IG at Curiosity Over Fear. 
Thank you so much, Zeke. This was an amazing conversation. I, I enjoyed it as well. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. I really do. Uh, okay, so listen, uh, I want you guys to like and subscribe us on uh, at same biz pod, S A M E B I Z P O D, and at a different day radio. Okay, check us out and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Same Business Different Day. We truly appreciate your support. Please like, subscribe, and leave a nice comment on all platforms. It really helps our show. The Same Business Different Day podcast is produced by A Different Day Radio, Star Fox Media, and James Russell.